Ink Ribbon. I think it's safe to say that Steve Burnside isn't the most popular character in the franchise, but he's definitely got some fans out there, and for good reason, because there's a lot more to him than meets the eye. So today I thought it'd be fun to take a second look at his role within the Resident Evil franchise. From cut scenarios to Luger headshots, here are 25 facts about Steve Burnside. There's no specific date given, but Steve and his father were in prison in 1998, the same year that Code Veronica takes place, which means he only had been in prison for a few months. When you have to save Steve in the palace, if you take too long, Steve will suffer more, and it will slightly alter the cutscene afterwards. Huh. Huh. That was too close. But I found something, thanks to you. Looks cool, huh? Oh, I need those. Give them to me. Huh. Huh. I made it. Huh. That was too close. What took you so long? Oh, I need those. Give them to me. The reason Steve was in prison was because of his father, who was caught selling confidential data that he got from Umbrella. Operatives from Umbrella captured Steve and his father, killing his mother in the process. In Revelations 2, Claire makes a reference to Steve when she quotes the line he says about guns being more reliable than people. You see? This thing is a lot more reliable than any person. Than people? Do you, uh, are you gonna use that? It's more reliable than any person. If you say so. While Steve is present in Gun Survivor 2 and it is technically canon, the story all takes place in Claire's mind as she has dreams after the events of Code Veronica happened. In Code Veronica X, Steve had his hairstyle changed due to him resembling Leonardo DiCaprio too much. By solving the drawer puzzle and obtaining the Luger replicas as Chris, you can unlock Steve in the battle minigame in Code Veronica. This is also the only time the game actually allows you to fire the gold Lugers. During the battle game, when playing as Steve, if you kill all the enemies in the room, then check the vending machines, he will play this animation. Very recently, there was a new secret in Code Veronica uncovered by the YouTube channel Raccoon City Cinema, where within the menus is an unused game type called Extreme Steve, which could have possibly been an entire scenario where you play as Steve. If you want to check out more on that, I left a link to that video down below. In Darkside Chronicles, if you beat the Game of Oblivion chapters on normal with an S rank, you unlock Steve's cowboy costume. This is the only alternate costume Steve ever gets in the entire franchise. The amount of zombie kills determines what Steve says at the end of his gameplay segment. If he kills 6 to 8 zombies, he says... It was dirty work, but this area is now clean. See? You can depend on me. If he kills four to five zombies, he says, Hey Claire! I managed to clear a path for you. It should be safe now. Well, what do you think of my work? If he kills two to three zombies, They weren't even worth wasting the ammo needed to kill them! I've been waiting for you, my lady. And if he only kills one zombie or none at all, he will say this. Check it out! I pulled through without a scratch! I even saved ammo for future use! Come on! I would have killed more, but I thought that you needed a workout. You see? This thing also during this segment, if he goes back to Claire, depending on how he's doing, she will say a different line. You're not done yet. 
You still have plenty of ammo. You don't have to worry about holding back. Do you want me to take care of this for you, little boy? In Darkseid Chronicles, Steve was redesigned, most likely to make him more appealing to the many fans who did not like him. Among the changes made were his shirt going from black to blue with some white stripes added, an updated hairstyle, a silver hoop earring, a deeper voice, and a barcode tattoo on his arm. He also now uses a Luger as his default weapon. While it's often mentioned that Wesker collected Steve's body, the only time we actually see it is in the Teppin card called Ruthless Retrieval. While we are on Teppin, I'll also mention he is featured in two other cards, one where he is human and one where he is transformed. In Darkseid Chronicles, Wesker is contacted by Javier Hidalgo and gives him a sample of the T. Veronica virus from Steve's body. This was able to keep his daughter Manuela alive, but as an alternative to Alexia's cryosleep, her father had girls from the village killed in order to continually replace her organs. Aside from Manuela, there is also another instance of the T. Veronica virus at play during Operation Javier. Several enemies called Jabberwock S3s appear throughout some chapters, bearing a striking resemblance to Steve's monster form, though more mutated as well as having eight mantis-like arms, similar to Nosferatu. It is actually possible to dodge Steve's attacks if you immediately run towards and behind him and then circle around and run away. The reason Alexander, Alexia, Steve, and Manuela all have vastly different transformations is due to the way the T. Veronica virus reacts to the host's mental state. This is also why Steve is able to control himself enough to stop mid-swing and spare Claire's life. Rockford Prison is actually less of a prison and more of a concentration camp, which is why there aren't a lot of cells. It's hinted by Steve that he was mainly stationed in the room with all the bunks. Prisoner collars, much like the one worn by Steve, are a common trope in media and vary wildly in function. Some are explosive collars, some are shock collars, but it seems that his is just simply an identification collar and might also possibly have a GPS tracker in it, but that's it. In Darkseid Chronicles, the number on it is 0267, the same as his prisoner number. But in the original game, it says 808, which doesn't seem to have any significance that I could find. Steve in his monster form actually has three different attacks. First is the standard swing, which occurs if Claire doesn't move. Then there's the double swing, where he will hit Claire twice as she's running away. And then there's the rarely seen headbutt. This attack will knock Claire to the ground and is only seen if she tries to attack Steve. When using the Lugers as Steve in extreme battle mode, if you aim up at the right time, you can pull off headshots and even double headshots. Steve's original concept art had him looking drastically different. He had blonde hair, a red bandana, yellow pants, and brown accessories consisting of boots, a sling holster, and one fingerless glove. His name was also spelled with an A added to it. In the Japanese strategy guide, Steve's backstory is elaborated on, explaining exactly what happened to him. As far as the events of what happened, his father had actually already been caught and went into hiding without telling his family so Umbrella sent operatives to interrogate Steve and his mother to find out where he was. Steve finally caved in, most likely after his mother was killed in front of him, and instead of being killed as well, he was instead kidnapped to keep him from going to the authorities. This is also why Steve gets so angry about Claire relying on Chris to come save her. Half of it is because he wants to be the one to save Claire, and half of it is because he's jealous that she has a family member who truly cares for her. While fans have speculated about Steve possibly being alive, mainly due to Wesker saying that it's possible to revive Steve, Steve, in his body there's still a living T. Alexia virus. Steve should be a good specimen. Maybe he'll come back alive just as I did and be able to see your sister again. You freak! Don't you touch him! This was mainly said just to hurt Claire's feelings and anger Chris. Steve is canonically dead, and his death is even reinforced in Darkseid Chronicles, where he is referred to as a corpse in Operation Javier. It's also worth noting that Steve died very, very young at the age of 17. No! You're coming with us! Claire... I... 
And that is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something new, and if you did, please don't try to kiss the like button while it's sleeping. If you like this video, please check out the other videos just like this on my channel covering all the Resident Evil lore I can find for you. Now, please go do that thing that you have been putting off and take a break from the internet. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.